Lost the blue right. prices, eat cereal for dinner. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. Yeah, we're yeah, supposed it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to swing through the stories in a blur of brilliance like trapeze artists in the big top. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Where did you get this stuff from? I it's don't really know, because I've, really I've written down something I love completely it. different I about 30 it. seconds ago and scribbled it out. I love it, I love it. Uh, before we move on, don't ask questions. This show is dedicated to my friend Angela. <laughs> right, let's go. Uh, Rishi Sunak has ruled out uh, a general election on May the 2nd. Uh, so he said they will not. He told ITV News uh, in the West Country on Thursday yesterday uh, uh, that uh, there will not be a general election on that day. Whether or not there might be one later in May or more likely uh, he'll stick to uh, late October. We await to find out. But uh, quite a significant moment. Well, he's going to play it as long as possible. Yeah. That's my prediction. Yeah. I mean, yeah. traditionally, the elections have always been held in May, but all of that was disrupted by the Boris Johnson snap election in December, which means technically the government doesn't have to call a general election until January, in fact. They can go that long. They can go into the very start of 2025, although that would be rather unprecedented. We don't tend to have elections in the winter because uh, it compresses voter turnout, and especially a lot of the Tory voters tend to be a little bit more elderly. Um, so they don't like usually running in winter. But if I was Rishi Sunak, I wouldn't exactly be calling an election right now. And let, See, polling on that. The only <laughs> reason for him to call an election in May is like, let's get the hell out of here and let Labour deal with it. I've had enough. But he's not like that. Politicians aren't like that. They're it not. looks like he will cling on until the bitter end. Mm. Uh, and meanwhile, if he does, if we go to October, let me tell you, the whole summer a bit, we'll, we'll all be saying... Doesn't look like you stopped the boats, Rishi. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's kind of ruined it, summer, isn't it? Election years. You know, they start campaigning so early now. They've basically started already. This is yeah. going to go on all year. It's like, oh, it's tedious. Yeah. It's uh, also uh, talking of that. You can always tell when there's an election in the offing because politicians start arguing about donors who's funding them, the big funders, the big donors. And of course, this guy Frank he Frank Hester is right in the frame because uh, he's accused of being a racist. Racist, uh, said racist things about Diane Abbott. He, we knew that he'd uh, donated £10 million to the Tories, making him one of the biggest donors of all time. Uh, and we discussed this mm. yesterday. There's now uh, a lot of pressure uh, on uh, the Prime Minister to also return a further £5 million that this guy mm. donated. So actually the full figure... Uh, as we actually revealed yesterday, is 15 million. Yeah, I mean, this is important because the last general election, the Conservatives spent 15 million pounds on their campaign in total. So mm. you're looking at quite a significant chunk of money here. In fact, the new party budget is around 48 million. That's how much they get in their coffers. So it suggests uh, old Frank here uh, at least makes up about a fifth of uh, the T Conservative Party's income. And actually, um, the spending cap for elections this year. I think it goes up to something like £30,000 or, or something fairly ginormous. Uh -huh. yeah. So, But still, you know, 15 million quid, if you had to give that back, it's yeah. quite a blow, isn't it? Yeah, if they do, they, if they give the money back, you can be able to tell the difference because if they don't give the money back, they'll be hurtling around the country in a big battle bus saying, vote Rishi and all that. Uh, if you see David Cameron and Rishi riding around Oxfordshire on a tandem, it means they gave the money back. Uh, now, <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, massive royal developments overnight. Mm. Uh, well, first of all, it was uh, a special occasion last night, the Diana, Diana Legacy Awards at the Science Museum in London. Uh, and we've already reported that Prince William made a speech there and Prince Harry uh, later came in 
via, via video link all the way from California. So they won't even be in the same room together, even if one of them is on Zoom. Uh, so that bitter feud uh, was laid bare last night. Uh, but uh, also at the same time, I mean, in an extraordinary move, Meghan announced, you know, in, in, in what many people are saying was a deliberate yeah, attempt to Diana overshadow Diana's legacy awards, uh, she announced the, the launch of her boring new uh, lifestyle website called uh, American, Riv American Riviera Orchard or something. But let's uh, go through the video. There's a video of that. First of all, uh, let's have a listen to uh, Prince William speaking at the Diana Award Awards last night live. This evening's Legacy Award is particularly special as it marks the 25th anniversary year of the Diana Award, a charity set up to reflect my mother's belief that young people can change the world. That legacy is something that both Catherine and I sought to focus on through our work, as have the 50,000 young people who have received the Diana Award over the past 25 years. Young people can change uh, the world and older people can change photographs. Uh, now, uh, let's move on to Harry coming back later in the award ceremony uh, via video from uh, Montecito. Every single day that you're working on these things, you don't even know the impact that it's making, right? You don't know that when you meet people and you have those interactions that you may have potentially change their day, change their outlook, change their perspective, giving them a little bit more hope and hopefully inspire them to go off and do something, uh, something similar. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in what, as I say, many people are, are interpreting as a deliberate bid to overshadow the two brothers, who, by the way, although they hate each other, they probably will never repair their feud, they are united in their devotion to the memory of their beloved mama, mother. So remember that. And uh, in my view, Meghan should not have been releasing uh, news of her boring website, uh, lifestyle website, America Riviera Orchard. What does that even mean? But anyway, there's a video with it. Have a look. There she is standing in some cloisters uh, in a sort of a strange Elizabethan outfit. Uh, and there is her own handwriting, which uh, looks rather, rather florid, doesn't it? Uh, a lot of people saying the timing of this is no accident. And by the way, Alex, when did she become a chef? Oh, I don't know. She's anything <laughs> she wants to be, isn't she? She's an actress in permanent acting mode. Yep. I mean, this just looks like the sort of clart that you get given in some sort of, you know, budget hotel to try, you know, the little miniature bottles of shampoo and stuff to try and make it look a bit more posh. I give it about six months before it ends up in the sort of, you know, business class on some American airline and then it will die <laughs> a slow death. Yeah. Because uh, who's sitting there? I mean, uh, do you know what else? I mean, the audacity of this woman saying like, you know, this is my range of lifestyle products by yeah. the Duchess of Sussex. It's like, what? She's just, she just thinks she's some sort of brand. Yes, exactly. Right. A, I don't think she you're is. Not, you're not a royal love. If you're a Royal, you'd be in this country yeah. in the drizzle, glad handing and cutting ribbons. You ain't no royal, you're just a bonehead who thinks there's something. <laughs> you know, no one likes you. Just go away with your silly merchandise. It is a re it's really crass, uh, the timing of this announcement. And uh, among the items you can buy from uh, America, nice. America. <laughs> American Orchard, was it? Okay. American Riviera Orchard. That's what does that like, mean? But this is like a sort of random word generator, yeah. isn't it? Anyway, right? she'll, she'll be sending her, uh, selling her own branded cutlery, which gives a whole new meaning to the term knife crime. That's why I get the good bucks, you know. Anyway, uh, we'll be we'll be definitely revisiting this story I later on. I know what on. to get you for Christmas is there. Yeah. All I can say. Don't get me oh, any. Don't get, get me any Megan's, Megan cutlery. I'm getting you some really, Megan mittens for really. like getting things out your oven. Right. Uh, let's uh, move on. Uh, a well, foreign Kent, news agency. This whole conspiracy theory is out of control now. Yeah. The foreign a foreign news agency boss has compared Kensington Palace to North Korea as it. chat shows and cartoons target the monarchy uh, in despicable attacks. The point is. 
I don't really blame Kate for this. Uh, if she ever even photoshopped it, my theory is there's no such thing as an original picture. This was always a com composite, hence Kensington Palace won't. But, you know, she's getting all the flack and it shouldn't be her. It should be her hapless staff, uh, the people who work at Kensington Palace who allow this PR disaster to turn into a catastrophe. I'll tell you what I don't understand about all of this. So apparently there have been some sort of top uh, expert forensic ph photograph analyst to have sort of looked at this photo and said it isn't a composite actually it's just had a few tweakments done very badly but that hasn't uh, silenced the conspiracy theorists there's now sort of conversations that that photograph we saw with her in the car with William looking out the window that that wasn't her either that there's a body double um, but what I don't understand is you know if that photo is just a few tweakments and she looks that good, then why doesn't she just release some sort of Zoom video, you know, and just sort of, you know, make a little video and say to the British public, thanks for all your well wishes. You know, the sort of, sort of you know, thing they do. I totally the agree with you. The sentiments of thank you for your cards and well wishes like um, Charles did. Yeah. The, the sort of ongoing silence is just constantly feeding yeah. the beast. I mean, they, they, it did, and the beast is, is in America where the conspiracy theories it's are nice. hurtful and out of control. And this is happening all over the world, Britain, uh, because, you know, we love and respect uh, the Princess of Wales. We are being fairly restrained about mm -hmm. this, but more and more, this speculation, they could kill it off. Obviously, Kate can stand up. She can Photoshop a photo or pose for a picture, maybe. We saw her, in the, we saw her driving around with William the other day. So well, why not a few words it's to say, video. I'm fine, sorry about the picture, please, no more of this nonsense that I'm dead or whatever the hell these theories are saying. Uh, I do think... Uh, uh, that they need to uh, break precedent and actually get yeah. Kate to put her head above the parapet because because this because this is out well, of control. Unless it's some sort of mega PR play to keep them hugely in the headlines. Nah, certainly it's doing not. That. It's not that because we're in the wrong kind of headlines. So uh, please, a little bit more transparency. And by the way, uh, William uh, went opened a little uh, kids charity in South London yesterday and uh, told the kids. He said, "Well, my what? My wife's the creative one," which maybe wasn't the right time to say that. Creative what with Photoshop? Uh, but as I say, I don't believe there is an original picture. I think that is a composite and we need some transparency uh, from the palace ASAP. Let's move on. Angela Rayner, Deputy Labour Leader, wants Diane Abbott back as a Labour MP despite her clear anti-Semitism in that letter she wrote to the Observer where she said racism against Jewish people isn't as bad as racism against people of colour. Uh, but uh, for somehow, because she's now being attacked left, right and centre by this guy, Frank Hester, a lot of Labour people want her back in the fold. Uh, well, you know, racism, racism, do you let people who are racist well, back bit, into the party? It's a bit mad, isn't it? Just because somebody has then, you know, had the hurty words said about her four years ago, it doesn't mean that the things she has said are suddenly exonerated. It's just, doesn't, yes, yes, the logic exactly. of the lot of this doesn't make sense. The logic of making someone give money back to someone who made terrible remarks doesn't make sense. The logic of saying, ah, as a result, Diane Abbott's remarks no longer count and she should be let back in doesn't make sense. It's just political opportunism on steroids, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah. And like you keep saying, nobody cares. I don't care. I don't care if somebody gives money to Conservative Party once said atrocious things. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what? So what? what? You know? So what? And I mean, the fact, OK, this guy, Hester, might be a bit of a racist. He certainly said racist things. Yeah, and and we can terrible. And we condemn him to hell for that. Uh, but he has apologised. He said he's deeply sorry. Uh, just as Diane Abbott has apologised for her letter to the uh, Observer. So, you know... It's, it's the, a lot of these Labour people say, well, Diane said sorry. It's time to let her back into the fold. Well, so it's is Frank Hester. Yeah. So is Frank Hester. Her, her apology is worth more than his? Oh, Ridiculous. It's just, it's yeah, uh, as we keep and it saying. Just, it just makes the average person watching all of this yeah. going on when the country's in such a mess just hate our politicians even more. Yeah, but they're doing well. Uh, they've well, got a pay rise. Their, yeah. their money is going to go up by 5.5% 5 .5 to 91,346 quid a year. Well, there you go. I mean, what I should point out here is IPSA, the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority, which is an independent governing body, um, yeah. are the ones who decide this. And it's in line with sort of growth of wages 
around the country with wage inflation. Um, and so they're going up 5.5%. Do you know, I'm going to say something quite controversial. Yeah. I actually think that politicians should be paid a big salary. It's a job of incredible responsibility. It takes a lot of hours. Sometimes debates go on until 10, 11 o'clock at night. Then there's all the constituency work. Fine. Pay them a really good salary so you get good people in politics. But say to them, no second jobs. Oh, God. No sniffing around lobbyists on the sidelines. No standing down early ahead of a general election because you've got some sort of position on some sort of board. No sort of coercion to think about your life after politics, which might affect not standing up for your convictions in Parliament. Pay politicians properly and then say, that's it. This is your real job. You focus on this and this alone and you stand up for what you believe in. Yeah, normally I, I, I do sort of agree with you, although I always like to say, let's give them a pay cut just to... Uh, tick them off a bit, but uh, uh, I kind of agree with you uh, because normally I would say, look, it's a free country. You can have as many jobs as you like. I used to sort of say this about politicians. Why can't they be the same as the rest of us? Well, the point is they represent us in our parliament. Therefore, they are kind of different. And I sort of agree with you. I mean... Yeah, that... well, I actually think the second homes things are nonsense. They should set up some sort of halls of residence. Yeah. That would be my other proposition. Yeah, maybe. But also, how about a, a sort of salary, uh, you know, and no expenses, a big salary, no expenses. But anyway, lots to talk about there. We'll talk about that later on. Don't know what you think? Do you think our MPs are worth ninety-one grand a year? Well, they're not worth ninety-one. Let us know later. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand. Moving on. Working from home, as you know, oh. I don't like it at all. I think it's. Got a seat uh, on the tube today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well you would have done. Yeah. Well, uh, you wouldn't have got a seat on the tube yesterday. If it was oh, the no. Northern Line, I it wasn't not. working. I, I can tell you that from personal experience. But uh, do you remember last summer? I remember mm. I was very worried about it because I was about to go on holiday. There was this air traffic control oh, yeah. chaos uh, because the system. Oh, the Crash. Se uh, uh, 700,000 yeah, passengers didn't get to go on holiday uh, on the right flights. It was uh, uh, hundreds of flights were cancelled, thousands of people stranded abroad. Remember that? They were all mm. stuck in sort of Spain and Greece, and when they, uh, the government had to fly special planes out to bring people back. Anyway, it turns out uh, that the chaos was caused because the engineers who uh, uh, administer or service the air traffic control systems, guess what? Well, they were working from home. Yeah, great. This is a, you know, slow clap for oh, aviation safety. Let's get our engineers working from home. Yeah. I mean, is this, uh, the working from home thing needs to stop. Yeah. Even though I hate that rush hour tube, I utterly despise it. It really sickens me when I get on a tube on a Monday and a Friday and it's basically empty. And I'm just like green with envy at those people having a lion, basically, yeah. or knocking off early. Yeah. But it's not good. We've become a lazy, feckless country where one fifth of the working yes. age population aren't working at all. The rest of them are sitting there in their pajamas, I don't know, playing solitaire, doing a load of laundry and sort of half assed working. Certainly, that seems to be what goes on in my estate agent's offices. Yeah. Um, and then people like us actually come into work, early morning alarms squeeze ourselves onto the commute, work really blimmin' hard, and then have to pay half our salaries to that lot out there who can't be bothered. Yeah, and by people working people working from home aren't working. They're watching they're not Netflix. Working. And people say, oh, they're more productive. It's just a lie. And if we're going to let uh, air traffic control engineers work from home, who else? Coppers? Lorry oh, drivers? No, there was that story, this is ridiculous. There? there was that story that there was, like, some NHS surgeon who was working for <laughs> from the beach from home. in Cyprus. Is... It's like, how, how do you do that? They're not, not working. Working. They're, they're not working, they're not working, they're skiving, no. you unless, idiots who run unless, these companies. Course, you're working from home right now and are tuned in to us. You, you're a great person, we like you. Yes, we do. You, yeah. you stay yeah. working work, from work home. Work from home, watch uh, Cross Talk this us. afternoon. Yeah. Right, exactly. uh, they still with air traffic control, kinder. Uh, mm. Grant Shapps uh, recently went to, to Poland, the Defence Secretary, where, of course, he made the standard issue speech about how awful Putin is and oh. evil Russia. So, uh, guess what? Russia jammed the satellite signals on his yeah. RAF plane carrying him back to Britain. So, uh, Shaps called it wildly irresponsible. What do you expect? Well, no, this is actually really interesting. So Shaps was going out there because there have been huge sort of NATO drills yeah. in the region to try and fend By off way, the Russian our aircraft there. carrier actually made it. Oh, did it, it get there in the, the end? Prince of Wales was out? actually hey. in the exercise. Yeah, anyway. I was going to say, first of all, we had a load of people yeah. not turning up, you know, with our 90,000 deployment of troops because they were probably working from home as well. Yeah. Then we had an aircraft 
aircraft carrier that couldn't seem to sort of like move 10 meters. Then we had that sort of like, look at our Trident missile launch and it plops into the ocean. Where well, Grant ahead. Shapps was there yeah, as well. So, I mean, it's just like, so, it's don't go near it's, Grant it's Shapps. Really bad. bad things happen when that but goes this away. Is, but this is deeply alarming. So this, he was flying within 60 miles of Kaliningrad, which is an, a, a Russian controlled enclave, slap bang between sort of Latvia, Lithuania, that part uh -huh. of the world. So sort of nestled into Central Europe is a little bit of Russia. And you can tell that uh, Putin's been building reinforcements there. He's going to start weaponizing it. But they've got, apparently, Russia, the most advanced uh, technology when it comes to this blocking of signals and sort of shutting down all of the gubbins and gadgets yeah. on a plane that keep it in the air. But that, in doing this, in blocking the um, signals to Grant Shapp's private jet, it would have also blocked the signals for all other aircraft in the area. And that could have caused a horrific, horrific accident. Imagine if little old Shapp's there in the plane that no longer had GP GPS, no longer had sort of radar and knew where other planes were, had sort of met a jumbo jet and fallen into the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Um, World War III. Yeah. So this is not to be scoffed at. This is pretty alarming. And Putin's just, you know, he's up in his game. The electronic warfare, they're very good at it. And apparently, as you say, a lot, of, a lot of commercial planes have suffered the same fate. But for 30 minutes, Basically, the defence secretary was on a plane that were, was out of control. So, uh, our thanks to Vladimir Putin for that. Uh, but uh, this is getting yeah, serious. Good luck in the election. Let's get. Vlad. This is getting serious. Uh, good luck in the election. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if you'll win. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Home Secretary, we covered this story yesterday, yeah. where we quite rightly heaped praise upon this marvelous cop who stepped to the leapt to the defence of a guardsman, a king's guardsman. Uh, uh, st stopping these Americans, ridiculing him, shouting insults, trying to put you know the way they stand there and they never move. But so a lot of tourists sort of trying. Name or something. They were they were definitely really annoying. This anyway, is kids being annoying. Anyway, uh, James Cleverly, the Home Secretary, has echoed what we said and backed this guy. Uh, let's have a look. To serve their country, all right. They take their job seriously. They are responsible for protecting this facility. They are not an object of ridicule. I um, appreciate you having fun. He's not having fun. He's got a long day. There's a lot of hours he's got to do. He is tiring, exhausting. It takes the f out of him. All right? We do not appreciate that. I will ask you to leave the facility. All right? Well done, well done you, well done you. So sticking up for the guardsman, as I say, here's to that officer. I think he should be named and I think he should be promoted. Well done, James Cleverly, for echoing what we said. So uh, let's move on. The uh, Ministry of Defence, as you know, it's got uh, you know a vast army of uh, inclusivity and diversity. Protecting the protectors. Calls protecting yeah. the protectors. Well, we it's such that. a nice place to work <laughs> uh, that there are more than 100 allegations of toxic work environment uh, with more than uh, 100 charges of bullying yeah. and abuse claims being investigated right now. So they, those diversity inclusivity officers aren't doing a very good job, are they? Yeah, I mean, some of these allegations are really quite uh, worrying, sexual assault and harassment from male co-workers. But when I looked into this, right, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a load of senior female execs who have sort of written about what day-to-day -day life is like, they list things like men commenting on the clothes they're wearing and talking over them. I'm like, that's just life. That's called being a woman wherever you work. Well, I said I complimented you. I said you look nice you did, today. No, you did. Yeah. I don't look, I usually do it because she doesn't you usually said I look, look nice today. <laughs> no, no, that's You're a joke. Great. That's a joke. But no, it's. <laughs> but, but this is the thing. I kind of like you know. I think on some level, people have got to be realists about this and just you know can't be oversensitive about everything. Now, if a man's going around grabbing your bum. That's bad. But if someone says you look nice, you smell nice, you know, that's all right, isn't it? Who cares? It's a compliment. And being talked it's over, yeah. that's just I wish life, people said it? that about me, but they never compliment me. But I wonder well, why that people is. people don't like lying to you. <laughs> 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 uh, right, so Sheridan Smith, famous actress, mm. now playing an actress uh, in a play in the West End called Opening Night. She plays a, a sort of drunken New York actress on her last legs. And every night, as part of an immersive experience, mm. the her character, she staggers out in, onto the streets of Soho and they beam those pictures back into the theatre and she falls over drunkenly. It's all acting, of course. Anyway, uh, the play's not doing very well. Apparently, people have been walking out in their droves. But outside, 
uh, where she... Uh, well, I don't know what we're looking at here, but this is a lovely... Uh, uh, oh, the, oh, it's lots of pictures of Sheridan Smith. Outside, crowds are gathering to see this nightly event of Sheridan Smith uh, falling over, and all the local restaurants are saying, bring it on, this is mm-hmm. great, because they're then all piling into yeah. the restaurants I mean, here when, for dinner. <laughs> when, she first, when she first did it, and people didn't realise it was part of a stage play happening inside, people rushed to help her, but now her words got around, instead so people are sort of gathering to see the moment. But <clears throat> I'd say one thing, I went to see Sheridan Smith in a, a, a Shirley Valentine production. Actress, actress, right? And it was just one entire monologue. She acted the socks off that. I was so impressed. Oh, it changed actor. my view of this woman. Uh, I mean, I just think she's incredible. Yeah, she's, a brilliant, she's a brilliant actress. Even There's no doubt about like that. I but, like her. But she's apparently sad. people are standing up and walking out of opening night because it's boring and they say, Is it? I don't know, I haven't seen it. Uh, there you but, go, that's some but, of us today I, this weekend, isn't it, Kev? Yeah, yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to go down and watch her fall, fall over. <laughs> Outside, so uh, I'll look forward to that because I'm always in Soho. That's true. <laughs> you'll be walking down the street with <laughs> <Yeah>. the pipe. <laughs> yourself and people that you're in the place. She'll fall over <laughs> along with me. Yeah, yeah, but they'll accidentally be, be the photographs time. of you coming out of the ivy. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time, trust me. Uh, actually, I'm thinking a couple of Fridays ago when I went with a few of my <laughs> colleagues here, we got to, well, we had a few drinks. Right, let's talk about uh, the Sunday Times. Uh, it's part of uh, the stable of publications and channels right here at Talk TV Towers. Uh, so there are our colleagues. The Sunday Times has produced their list of the best places to live mm, in Britain in 2024. Hear. Now, apparently, the very best place uh, is North Berwick in mm, East Lothian. Good old Berwick. I've been to Berwick. I used to go to university up is in Is that Durham. right on the on the border? It's right on the border. So I thought Berwick, Berwick upon Tweed, I thought was actually part of England. Maybe not. I don't. Maybe North well, Berwick isn't. I don't quite know where the no, line is. No, no, it is. Uh, it is the most northerly town in England. And, uh, and if but you North go Berwick, there, Berwick, East Lothian yeah. is in Scotland. Yeah. yeah, yeah, see, it. it's first Scottish so maybe place North, to top the list. Oh, so is this so, Scotland? If you're, if you're from Berwick and you can tell us whether you're English or Scottish, uh, let us know, 0344. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And uh, let us know why it's such a great place. Yeah. Abergavenny is second. No, that is a great place. In Monmouthshire, place. is it? Very is it? Yeah, yeah, big, famous food market there. It's become a real foodie hotspot. It's a great place to You see, this is... Um, the... and, um, and Boston Spa, West Yorkshire, there you yes, go. Yes, that's You third. know Boston in America named after that one? Like uh, Washington, yeah. America named after Washington in is the it, North the, this is all sort of uh, alien to me because I've never left London. Uh, the only uh, place that I can uh, gel with here is Clerkenwell in hey! London. That Clerkenwell in London comes in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth. Ah, oh, but look what comes above it. Siren Sester in Gloucestershire, and that's right up the road from where I'm from. Boom, go okay. Siren. Uh, right, if you're a tennis player, uh, there can be problems. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, let's have a look at these two tennis players playing over there in uh, the Indian Wells with, tennis with tournament problems. in California. They had a problem with a B. Watch this. There they go. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, a whole this swarm is of Cal- bees uh, descend upon look, look. the court. That's how Kerr is. And one they're of the flying best into the cameras. Camera. They're like stinging then, the players. Ah, again. Ah. Like, that geese has to try and swap them. She's and one really of them actually awful. gets stung and runs off is the that, court. Uh, yeah. Apparently. Yeah. 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 So there's a new. Uh, yeah. That's a, what's that, a double fault or something? Uh, they had to buzz off and get off the court. Hey, see what you did uh, that's there. That's in Palm Springs, by the way. It's very, very hot there as well. So there you go. Uh, we will be back later, but sadly, uh, we have come to the end of this show, Alex. Join us at one o'clock for the one and only Cross Talk. Up next is Jake Berry. <laughs> Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry 
has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! <laughs> it's carry on what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. 